Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. It's Monday, which can only mean one thing. It is time for another episode of Mix Set Monday. I finally got around this weekend to farming some of the missing endgame pieces I needed. Things like Gold and Silver Wrath, Brute Tigrex, Ruin and Nerg, that kind of stuff. So today's sets are going to use some of those pieces. We've got armor sets for the Switch Axe and also for the Heavy Bowgun. Very briefly, just before we get started, if you guys do want to check out the way that we record our gameplay and some of the other stuff we use on stream, be sure to click the link in the description box down below to check out some of the Elgato products. They're a sponsor for this channel and we use a ton of their stuff for pretty much everything that we do. The link to that is down below. Now, to turn attention to a heavy bowgun set first, I'd said to you guys that I'm trying to sort of gradually work through the weapons, so each week I'm trying to make sure that I pick a weapon that hasn't been covered just yet. So, this one is for the heavy bowgun. This set comes from Iconoclast, and it's basically a set that allows you to kind of face tank a lot of stuff and just do a great deal of damage. In fact, to quote Iconoclast, you can kill any monster in a fast time without even trying. It's comprised of the Gold Rathian Beta Helmet, the Kirin Alpha Chest, the Kaiser Van Braces Beta Plus, the Gold Wrath Beta Plus Waste, and of course, yes, I appreciate these kind of occur a lot. Crit's a good thing, all right? Once again, the Garuga Greaves Beta Plus. Your charm in this situation is the Ironside Charm. Ideally, you would have this upgraded to Ironside Charm 5. I am missing a few pieces, but that's kind of what you want to aim for because that's going to give you max guard, as you'll see in a minute. And you ideally want to have the Loyal Thunder, which is the fully upgraded Zenoga Heavy Bowgun. Again, I'm missing a few parts. I'll get around to it, but principally, this still demonstrates exactly what you need to see. Now, on the decoration front, I'm actually missing a couple of the decorations that Iconoclast has. They actually have like some really, really good ones. A couple of those level 4 decorations that has release and protection or release and vitality. I have not been so lucky, hence why I just have two level 3 release jewels in here. So if I put Iconoclast's screenshot up here, you can see these are the ideal decorations. Altogether, it's going to give you a rather nice set of skills. But again, if you don't have those, you can kind of fill in as you see fit. If we turn our attention to the skills. The main thing here is you have the Gold Rathian set piece bonus, Divine Blessing Secret. This allows you to push Divine Blessing up to level 5. So if you jump all the way down there, again, the reason I don't have mine to level 5 is because I don't have that level 4 decoration that is release and protection. But assuming you do, then you can get it all the way to level 5, which would reduce damage taken by 60% and the skill becomes easier to activate. So given that you're basically supposed to be face tanking stuff in the event that your shield doesn't work or in the event you get hit by something, this is probably going to proc and it's going to help you a lot of the time. Of course, on top of that, we also have Critical Eye at level 7, again for that flat 40% affinity boost. You would again have guard level 5, assuming you max out the iron side charm. So that would then massively decrease the impact of attacks and reduce stamina depletion by 50%. And since we're using heavy bowgun, we'll be putting a shield on it. And that's precisely why we have that. It basically just reduces the knockback and the stamina depletion. So you can kind of firm those attacks, even some of the more damaging ones. Of course, on top of that, you would then have free element slash ammo up. Ammo up in this case, because that then expands the clip size for most ammo. You then have crit boost level 3 to increase the damage dealt by critical hits to 40%. Weakness exploit, giving you that base 30% increased affinity when striking weak spots, an additional 20% if that point is wounded. Again, if you had the decorations that Iconoclast had, you would have health boost level 3, giving you the max 50 health, but in this situation I only have 2. You then have spread slash power shots, which increase the attack power of spread ammo, power shots and 4000 dragons, so for us that spread ammo. You then also have a point in heat guard, nullifies heat damage, you know, it's just kind of an extra for the armor set, but either way, it's not exactly the end of the world. Fortify, I mean, not that you're necessarily planning to die, but in the event you do, then uh, you're going to come back stronger and guard up, meaning that you can block anything. So even some of those unblockable attacks, you can just sit there and guard. Now, Iconoclast didn't actually list the mods for the Bogon, but given that it is focusing around guard, I'm assuming that it is like stacked shields. So I've just thrown shields in here and a close range up more just for the additional damage. You could, of course, tweak it slightly differently depending on how it performs. But generally speaking, you're going to want shields on this because the idea is that with the heavy Bogon, you aim down sights to fire and provided you're aiming down sights, you're also able to block. And given that you have guard, you're going to get reduced knockback. Given that you have guard up, you're going to be able to block things you couldn't normally block. And in the event that you do occasionally get hit and your block just doesn't work, you have divine blessing. So basically, it allows you to dish out a ton of damage and block everything at the same time and kind of just sort of sit there and laugh at everything that comes your way. Then moving on from there to the next set, we have an armor set from iFox. This is admittedly not specifically for the Switch Axe. The setup that he uses does use the Switch Axe. So for that purpose, I of course, you know, turn my attention to that. But you could technically speaking use this with kind of any weapon because this is just an armor set that stacks a ton of different attack skills. 
It's comprised of the Fell Shroud Helm Beta Plus, the Rex Royal Mail Beta Plus, the Ruinous Van Braces Beta Plus, the Ruinous Coil Beta Plus, and again the Garuga Greaves Beta Plus. Your charm in this situation would ideally be the Challenger Charm 3, so again the maxed out one, I'm missing one point, still missing some materials, and for the purposes of this setup, the Golden Crescent is the switch axe that's being used, I've got the one just before that. If you guys saw my tweet yesterday, you know uh, I spent a lot of time farming this weekend, and I could not get a Rathian Mantle to drop, I got fed up. I went and uh, melded my Rathian mantle, then went to fight a gold Rathian because I needed the tail, cut the tail off, carved a mantle, didn't get a tail. That's why I don't have the maxed out gold crescent, all right? So you're going to have to deal with it. Anyway, turning your attention to the decorations, you're going to want to throw in a few expert jewels, of course the uh, level 4 one and the level 1 ones to max out your critical eye. You're going to want the Flawless Jewel in there to max out peak performance. You're going to want to put in ideally two attack jewels. So once again, your boy still doesn't have a second attack jewel. I really need to go back and just do that lesson question, just get it. So I might be able to do that today. Either way, two attack jewels and of course tenderized jewels. And this all together will give you a ton of attack skills. You will also have the two piece Nogante set bonus, which is the one that regenerates your health as you continue to attack a monster. Recovery does of course vary by weapon, meaning that can tie nicely in with the peak performance. Of course, on top of that, you have Critical Eye level 7 for that 40% affinity. You would have Attack Boost level 7, assuming you have that decoration for the full 21 attack and 5% affinity. You would also end up with level 5 Agitator, assuming you had the maxed out Challenger Charm, which would then give you additional 20 attack and 10% affinity when it's active. And given that monsters are kind of always enraged in Iceborne, because if they're not enraged, you jump on their head, you fire them into the wall, you, you know, yeet them into the wall, as I always refer to it, and then upon getting back up, they get angry. So it's very easy to basically fight a monster in almost 100% rage uptime. So you can really, really get the benefit out of Agitator. I feel like an Iceborne, it is a lot more useful than it ever was before. So uh, definitely a great skill. You also have Crit Boost, again, for that increased damage dealt by critical hits. Weakness Exploit, you then also have Peak Performance, meaning that while active, while your health is full, it also grants you a further plus 20 attack. And because you have the healing from the No Gente set bonus, you can, of course, benefit from this. It's not necessarily the best healing. I've done this kind of testing in the past. If you link back to World, we had the Vampire set, which, you know, you get better healing from the Valhazak stuff. But regardless, the No Gente set bonus is going to lean into Peak Performance. And you also have one point in earplugs, kind of an extra bonus skill here, but hey, it doesn't hurt. So, all up, this is basically just like a big damage set. You could, as mentioned, throw on kind of any weapon you want, provided you've got that one slot for the expert jewel. So, uh, you know, make of this what you will. If you just want to go out and do a bunch of damage, as I said before, it's not all about damage. It's not always about just sets with crazy attack skills. We've had some different ones. We've had some uh, unique sets, like the KO Light Bogon ones. But for those of you guys that just don't care about that and just want a bunch of attack, then uh, here you go. Anyway, that's it for the time being. That is this week's episode of Mix Set Monday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you want to submit your own sets, make sure you go and join the Arax Gaming Discord. The link to that is in the description box down below. Go over there, join the Monster Hunter channels, go over to the Mix Set Monday submission thread. You can then post a screenshot of your armor set. Ideally, this page you see here because this shows the armor set, the decorations and the skills. I'll then pick my favorite ones on a weekly basis and try and craft them for the next episode. Anyway, that's it for the time being. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.